Can't you read the sign? Is anyone in here? Man, it's Christmas time. I've got a business to run. I don't keep them coming in. Leave the door unlocked. What's this? It's a Christmas present. <laughs> For me. But who's it from? Yeah. My curiosity's got the best of me. I'm going to open it. One of our own talking dolls. Well, who would have sent me this? French hen and pow! Mm. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Are we going to do all 12 days of Christmas? Ah, oh, am I disturbing you? Yes, I can't concentrate on my paperwork. Six geese are laying. Five gold rings. Four calling birds. Three French hens. Oh, it's those bloody French hens again. And a partridge in a pear tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying. Five gold rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a pair of fish in a pear tree. You know, my last employer, Gregory Mega, wouldn't have minded my singing. Is that why he left? In fact, he probably would have joined right in. You want to join in? No, Mr. Russell. Stop singing. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Christmas carols, only not while they're being sung by you. Everyone's a critic. And not while I'm trying to do this paperwork, which has to be filed with the district attorney's office tonight, midnight. Incidentally, why aren't you helping me with this? I'm still on my break. I have four, count them, four minutes left. I'm taking advantage of my time and filling out my Christmas cards. In advantage of who? I decided not to send as many cards as last year, though. It's just too expensive. And on the salary you pay me. <laughs> Are you going to send all of those cards? Mm-hmm. To friends and family? No, these are just for my friends. I exchange Christmas cards with my family Christmas Day. That kind of gets Christmas started for us. Mm, sounds like an exciting American Christmas. You must have 40 or 50 cards in that stack. 73. But obviously you're not counting. No one sends 73 cards, especially with today's stamp prices. That's why I'm cutting back. But I uh, guess you won't have the problem of uh, sending Christmas cards, considering it's your first Christmas in the States and you have no friends. I have friends, and I send cards. Oh, how many? I bloody well don't know. I never count. 
Oh, come, come. No need to get defensive. Just because I have a lot more friends and I'm sending a lot more Christmas cards than you will in a lifetime. You know, I think you're sending all of those cards just to look impressive. You think I enjoy getting writer's cramp? Having to stand in long lines at the post office and having to spend lots of money on postage just to look impressive? Considering it's you, yes. Well, see here, Mr. Nicholas Wilfred Smythe the Fourth. I want you to know, just because you're my current employer, that I don't... I wonder who the distraught-looking lady is. You think everyone looks distraught. Why don't you ask her? Uh, excuse me, may I help you? Ma'am? Ma'am? Oh, pardon me. I didn't hear you. I've been so distraught lately. I thought you had that look on your face. Always. My name is Nicholas Wilfred Smythe, the fourth. Oh, <clears throat> this is Nicholas Russell, my assistant. My name is Cynthia Van Martin, the third. My friends call me Cynthia. But since you are not my friends, you may call me Ms. Van Martin the Third. If you're waiting for a light, you're up a creek. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Russell, let's not be rude to our potential paying client. <clears throat> now, Ms. Van Martin, please, the third, let's sit down here at my desk. And uh, Mr. Russell, get your notepad and take notes. I'll get my notepad, but the note part, you can so, just... So, how did you find out about our investigating firm, and how may we help you? This better sound believable. I discovered your investigating firm quite by accident. Ah, well, we are a new team. That's not saying we're not very experienced and qualified professionals for almost any case. Are you talking about us? But, even though we are a new partnership... Partner? We are confident that no case is too challenging. Right, Mr. Russell? All right, partner. And we're always curious as to how people heard about our firm. Did you read about us in one of our advertisements? In other words, did you find one of our Xerox flyers underneath your windshield wiper? Actually, I discovered your firm quite by accident. At your door, I stopped to fix the heel on my shoe. I leaned up against the trellis in front of this old chi charming building, and the trellis caved in. I came in here to press charges and possibly sue the pants off you, and I guess you, for injuring my back and breaking my fingernail. But I saw your Nicholas and Nicholas private investigator sign, and I figured we could barter a deal, gentlemen. My lawsuit in exchange for investigating assistance? Perhaps a reasonable discount, but nothing's free, lady. We gotta come up with money to fix our trellis. The trellis you broke? We'll talk. You may assist me by helping me find the person or persons responsible for putting three of my top employees into a coma with a toy soldier, a jack-in-the-box, and an adorable little baby doll that says mama when squeezed. Huh? You heard me. That's the problem. We heard every word. I am not in the habit of repeating myself. If I have to, I'll... I'll... I'll take my business elsewhere. Along with your lawsuit. Oh, no, wait. Um, just one moment, please. Wait. Um, just... Uh, Miss Van Martin. The third. The third. We just need a bit more information from you. Yeah, like, did you recently escape from an insane asylum? If you're making fun of me... Oh, no, no, of course not. I was. It's just that your story sounds a bit, to put it delicately... Sounds like a crocker. Mr. Yeah! Russell, go back to milking your maids. <clears throat> Please continue, Miss Van Martin, the third. All right. Three of my top professionals have been put into a deep coma. Each of the employees was attacked by a toy rigged with some sort of chemical device that renders its victims unconscious. Maybe you should look into being committed. Mr. Russell, please continue, Ms. Van Martin, the third. Help me. I'm desperate. 
why else do you think I'm sticking my neck out hiring you two? Yesterday I received a threatening phone call warning me that my business is on the verge of total collapse. If I don't pay this unknown caller $1.1 million, he'll... he'll release another one of those terrible toys. This time his target might be me. That would be a shame. I... I, I mean, I, I could see where that might put a crimp into your Christmas. Well, it has put a crimp into my Christmas. And not having a full staff is beginning to ruin my business. I know this case does seem bizarre. Bizarre. Bloody bizarre. Strange. Bloody strange. Odd. Bloody odd. Unbelievable. Bloody unbelievable. Bloody. Bloody bloody. You know, this could go on forever. I know. So... Could we get back to my case? Oh. I really do need your help. Have we got a deal? Ms. Van Martin. The third. We know. Will you excuse us? I just need to confer with my partner. Excuse us. Uh, we'll be right back. Have a seat over here and help yourself with some coffee. Oh, I baked some sugar Christmas cookies this morning. And be sure to eat the one. Mr. Russell, what do you think? I should have put more sugar in the sugar Christmas cookies and Miss Van Martin III might think I was skimping and think we're cheap. She already thinks we're cheap. Look at this office. Oh, I don't know. A new color scheme could work miracles. I meant, how do you feel about taking on her case? You're asking me? My opinion counts? I could cry. But I won't. Consider it an early Christmas gift. So, what do you think? Well, weighing out all her facts, Considering the time of year it is, we mustn't forget that her case might cut into our Christmas celebration. Only if we're lucky. Oh, and one other thing to keep in mind. Uh, uh, Rent is due, and even though we've been working together for about three weeks, we haven't had a case yet. That is an important fact to consider before taking on her case. Mm. When do you want us to start, Miss Van Martin III? All the toys involved came from this shop. According to Ms. Van Martin, they did. Someone is coming in here, buying Van Martin's toys, rigging them somehow, and sending them off to her staff one by one. So, uh, what are you gonna do with that baby doll? Or, uh, is there something I should know about you? You Americans are so droll. This was discovered next to the unconscious store manager. I'm going to have it analyzed by a very close friend of mine, Professor Paul Michaels. See, you do have friends. An intelligent friend at that. A professor. Well, I guess I can take the rest of the day off. I have a lot more Christmas shopping to do. You, my assistant cohort, are going to keep an eye on the remaining toy designer tonight. I hope, I hope this, doesn't this doesn't interfere, interfere, interfere with, with my, my Christmas, Christmas shopping. shopping. Paul? Paul? Oh, 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 oh. Why did you step on my hand, you idiot? Nicholas, Nicholas Smite, for the wonderful surprise! Why did you step on my hand, you idiot? What were you doing on the floor, you imbecile? Well, I, I don't remember. I was, uh, well, I was, uh... Oh, my ball fell down. My Christmas light bulb is burned down. That's why I was on the floor trying to pick it up and throw it away. Ah. So, Nicholas, my good friend, what can I do for you? Ah, but I have a very important favor. Very, well, oh, excuse me just for a minute. Oh, am I interrupting an exciting experiment? Well, kind of. I'll be testing here in just about 30 seconds. Mm, just one more ingredient here. Yeah. Ah! Now it's ready for the supreme test. It looks like eggnog. Well, it is eggnog. My special Christmas eggnog. Not too much egg, but lots of nog. <laughs> well, well, well. Here, drink up, drink up. Oh. <laughs> what brings you to my little shop of horrors, Nicholas? Hmm. Ah, well, I have a very important favor to ask of you. Okay, well, you continue and I'll, uh, 
I'll just uh, continue on myself here. There's a very important thing I'm doing. I have to try to figure out uh, what I should put on the top of the Christmas tree. Maybe like this cute little, uh, this cute little teddy bear. Mm. Or maybe I'll put up the, the candy cane here, or... I, 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 any suggestions as to what I should stick up on the tree? I have an idea of something you could stick up there, but I don't think you'd like it very much. Sleep in heavenly peace. This is a great assignment. I can keep my eye on you and wrap my presents all in one. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Nicholas, I don't think it's necessary for you to be in the same room with me. No offense, but I can't concentrate with all of that paper cutting, tape ripping, Christmas caroling, especially after what you did to Silent Night. Why don't you move into the reception area? That way, you'll be in the next room and I can have some peace and quiet. Oh, I mean that in the cheeriest of ways. Well, Seth, it's like this. I know what you're saying, but my boss, Nicholas Smythe, told me to keep a close eye on you. After all, you are Cynthia Van Martin's top toy designer, and well, I'm not to let you out of my sight. Savvy? Yes, but Nicholas Smythe doesn't have to put up with you. I mean, well, he isn't on a tight deadline like I am, and well, now that we're a couple of people short, and. Christmas is just, just, just the break I've been, I've been waiting, waiting for. for. Now, you stay here and continue to work while I investigate. Um, just to be on the safe side, I'll lock you in. I hope you lose the key. Excuse me, Seth? Oh, I said, please, whatever you do, don't lose that key. Oh, don't worry. I have it tied to a string around my neck. A string around your neck? <laughs> what a lovely idea. I'll be back as soon as I find out what's up. Good. That should take about 12 years. Am I decorating your tree? Because you're a friend and because I'm doing you a favor, remember? Keep decorating. Find anything yet? Not yet. Mmm! Oh! Mm. You found something? Not yet. something. It looks like a, it looks like a residue. Substance. I'll see what it is. Wait a minute. I'll see what it is. You keep decorating the tree. Who's in here? Who's in here? Christmas gift, an early Christmas gift. There's no Christmas card. Here I'm doing what I've been trying to avoid all season. Look, I haven't played with one of these in many years. Well, maybe it's more like six months. What is that music? Sounds like romper room. Paul? 
Paul. Someone doesn't want us to interfere. Oh, I can't concentrate on this. I can still hear Nicholas's rendition of Silent Night ringing in my ears. That dodo can't even open the door with the key. Thanks for opening the door, Seth. Hey, wait a minute. I locked that on my way out. How did you open the door? Oh, an advanced technique I learned in preschool called turning the knob. Oh, I see now. My key was jammed. Well, perhaps if you were to stick the key in your, uh, uh in the knob a bit more gently, it would work. Well, I didn't see anyone. I guess it's, as we say in the investigating trade, a false alarm. Well, I'm not in the investigative trade, but I would have put it in the exact same way. Well, back to wrapping presents. Oh, God. And singing Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. Our finest gifts we bring. Not bad knots. Mmm, pretty good. They've gotten another one. This time it is my best toy designer, Seth Daniels. I've seen better. Oh, if this keeps up, I'm not going to have any employees left. It is your job to find out who is behind this. It is your job to find out why this is happening. It is your job to stop whoever it is before I lose anyone else. I don't remember seeing that in my job description. Mr. Smythe, how about you? Four of my employees out of a staff of eight. What have you to say about that? Well, those aren't bad odds, considering. Considering that you and your employer have let this happen again. It's almost Christmas, and there are a lot of commitments my toy factory has to fulfill. Yeah, tell me about it, lady. I still have a bird that needs stuffing. Mr. Russell, stuff it! Miss Cynthia Van Martin III, this is a very unusual mystery. Yeah, this ain't your average run-of-the-mill Hardy Boys mystery. It's a real mind-blower. I think what my apprentice is trying to say in his usual long-winded way is just going to take time. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Thanks. Can we get on with our case, please? Or shall I ask, is this our case? I suppose so. It's late, and it's almost Christmas, and I have neither the time nor the energy to hire another detective. Besides, I can't beat the rates, considering the potential lawsuit. You're still bucking for that discount, aren't you? What's the next move? The next move is bed. British men are so sensual. Oh, I didn't mean you, Mrs. Cynthia Van Martin. The third. The third. But you can call me Cynthia. No, I, I meant bed for Mr. Russell and me. Huh? Oh. Oh, no, no, no. It's not what you think. I, it's a phrase. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. Mr. Smythe is trying to say in his usual long-winded way is that we'll get back on the case bright and early in the morning. We're calling it a night. How's that for P.I.ing? 
I have to do all my Christmas activities after hours. And believe me, stuffing a bird at 2 a.m. is about as after hours as I get. Why are you still up? I couldn't sleep. I've been thinking about our case. And I decided to take a drive. Well, in that case, would you care for some hot chocolate? Or maybe some eggnog? How about some Christmas cookies fresh from the oven? Or want to see the rest of a Charlie Brown Christmas? Or perhaps another Yuletide favorite? I have a bunch on tape. Or do you think it's going to snow for Christmas? Slow down. If I slow down, I'm going to fall asleep, and I'm not ready to do that yet. You don't understand. Oh, that's just because my drugs haven't taken effect. Give me five minutes. I didn't come by for a visit. That's the problem with our relationship. It's too work-oriented. That's because I'm your boss. Now you stuff it while I talk. I can't put my finger on it, but I think I've just been insulted. I must admit, this case is baffling. The idea of toys being rigged with some kind of chemical that can put a person into a deep coma? Well, the whole thing is simply ridiculous. You following me? Chemical, coma, ridiculous, continue. Four of Ms. Van Martin's employees and my friend Paul have been put into a coma. Paul? You mean your chemist friend? He's more than a chemist, he's a professor of science. Some professor. He's out cold too. Well, why was he put into a coma? Someone doesn't want us to become too wise. No worry there. Someone is trying to keep one step ahead of us. Someone with big feet? Someone is keeping a very close eye on us. You think they're watching... everything? For your turkeys and your sake, I hope not. My point is, we not only have Ms. Van Martin to watch over, but her four remaining employees. It might not be a bad idea to, to check up on them every hour of every day, just until we have the culprit in custody. Sounds time consuming to me, but you're the boss. What do you want to do? Drop your bird and let's pay a visit to the remaining employees. But Mr. Smythe, it's two in the morning. Will I be getting overtime for this? I suppose it could wait until morning. It is in the middle of the night. They're probably all in bed. Even the villains have to sleep. Amazing how overtime can change a guy's mind. If we can crack this case before Christmas, well, there just might be a little bonus in it for you. How about a big bonus? I'll see you in the morning, bright and early. That Nicholas Smythe certainly does have the Christmas spirit. Excuse me. I'll be right with you. Uh, ma'am? Look, I said I'll be right with you. But ma'am. I am a very busy woman and I don't need this tension. Oh, that's all right. We can wait while you finish your work. Yeah, oh, don't worry about us. You are British, aren't you? Uh-oh, this dame's smart. Why, yes I am, Miss... Kathy O'Brien. But you can call me Kay. Oh, brother. Excuse me, Kay. Look, will you wait your turn? What is your name? Nicholas Wilfred Smythe the Four. Oh, sure. Go ahead and impress her with that fourth business. Uh, Kay, for your information, I'm a Nicholas, too. Yes. Have you ever thought about a legal name change? We are in a bit of a rush. Well, you sound just like David Niven before he died. That's uh, debatable. What can I do to you, for you, David? Nicholas. His name is Nicholas, like mine. You call him David. Mind your own business, Mr. Russell. Kay, we were sent here by Cynthia Van Martin III to go through some back files, so if you could just... Anything. Follow me. Oh, I guess you'll have to come, too. This way. But first, a little Christmas cheer. Oh, please. Mr. Smythe, who's this? That's Betty Bishop, the new toy store manager. How did you know that? You're forgetting who you're dealing with. I am a good private investigator. I research and get all the facts, the correct facts. The facts that will put the guilty behind bars and the innocent free and secure. And last, but not least, I read the back of the photo. Her status is printed on the back of the picture. Tough investigating assignment. 
This Betty Bishop came on the scene awfully fast. It says here, she was hired as manager and put in that toy store only 12 hours after the other toy store manager was found unconscious. Could she be the clue we're looking for? Possibly. Let's check out the toy store. But this time we'll go incognito. Oh no, incognito. Why do I get the feeling I'm going to end up in some sort of ridiculous outfit? simply going to observe Betty Bishop. I may talk to her, perhaps, if I see... Come on, Mr. Russell, you've come this far. That's before I saw my reflection in the window. As your employer, not to mention Santa Claus, I insist you come into the toy store with me. No. There must be a law that states one's employer can't make one's employee dress as an elf with or without pointy ears. I look like Mr. Spock in a Star Trek Christmas episode. Why can't I be Santa Claus? Who ever heard of a skinny British Santa Claus? Who ever heard of a skinny American Santa Claus? Hey, I've been sick. At least my Santa version will sound normal. Whiny and high-pitched is normal for Santa Claus. You Americans are weird. Well, it's better than Cheerio and all that sort of rot. Look, damn it, get your silly ass butt into that bloody toy store. No. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I feel like a fool. People are gonna stare at us. I feel ridiculous. No one is staring at us. Excuse me. You know how touchy elves can be? He probably just got hold of a bad sugar plum or something. Mr. Russell. Mr. Russell, where are you? I'm in here. What are you doing in there? Come in and I'll show you. What is this room? It's the toy store stock room. Isn't this a wonderful place for a mystery to unfold? Just think, a murder could happen here. That's a loaded statement. Or better yet, this is where the terrible toys are created. Dark, dingy, creepy. You see it in the movies all the time. The movies. You look around here and I'll check out Betty Bishop. When you're through here, meet me in the alley. Let's say 20 minutes. Oh, I'll synchronize my Santa watch. I shall need three more packages tomorrow at noon. Three? Oh, well, I'll have to call our supplier to be sure we can get three more special orders in by tomorrow noon. We are short three staff. Three tomorrow noon. Santa, what brings you to my toy shop? Are you talking to me? Well, you're the only Santa Claus here. And British to boot, how quaint. <laughs> Jolly quaint. <laughs> I uh, just came in here on my break from the mall to, um, to escape the screaming brats <laughs> and uh, to check out some of the toys. Uh, toys like that bloke just bought. And, uh, um, so, what did he buy? And would a child of seven, 12, 32, perhaps, enjoy such a toy? Oh, you mean that bloke, a uh, gentleman who just left my shop three minutes ago? Yeah, him. Oh, that was a special order from our catalog. But, Santa, I suggest you have your toys delivered. It will save you time. <laughs> oh, oh, Santa, <laughs> deliver, save time, got it. <laughs> so, can I purchase the same item that man just bought? I'm afraid we're out of stock of that particular item. He bought the last one. Ah, and what item did he buy? Just in case I want to buy it next year. I'll have to check the paperwork. We have so many customers. Oh, yeah. But it's so difficult to oh. keep all the orders straight, especially at Christmas mm -hmm. time. Oh, 
Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. He purchased a harmless little talking baby doll. Oh, you just pull her little string and she says... Damn it! Oh, I'm quite sure that isn't in her little vocabulary. Oh, wait. That man didn't buy a Susie Poopy. No? No. Oh. I had the wrong invoice. He purchased a jack-in-the-box. Where is it being delivered? Oh, I'm sorry. That is personal and confidential business. One Eleven South Union Street. Ma'am, this Christmas present arrived for you today. Hmm, I wonder who sent it. Thank you, Diana. Leave it on the table. Yes, ma'am. You know, if that was my Christmas parcel, I'd be dying to know what's in it. Diana, that will be all. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. But you know, in spite of the fact that there isn't a signature on the from part to the to and from card, I would be climbing the walls wanting to know who sent this Christmas present. An old lover? A new lover? A mysterious stranger, perhaps? Diana! Yes, ma'am. I know I'd be dying of curiosity. Mr. Russell. Mr. Russell, where are you? No! Oh, I can't go to jail. <laughs> oh, hi, Nicholas. Mr. Smythe. Whatever. Want to play? What are you doing? We're playing Monopoly. I can see that. Why are we playing Monopoly and, uh, who is this? This is Robin Williams. Oh, not the comedian and star of the Mork and Mindy television series. Uh, you are familiar with American television? Unfortunately, yes. This Robin Williams has been this toy store stockman for five years. I just landed on Mediterranean Avenue. <laughs> Do you want to be the shoe? Hello. Oh, we're playing Monopoly because we got tired of playing Parcheesi. Mr. Russell, may I see you for a moment over in the teddy bear aisle? Excuse me, Robin. My boss wants to see me. I I'll be right back. Oh. And remember, just because I'm winning, no cheating. Ow! Why are you playing Parcheesi? Monopoly. Whatever. Why are you playing games and making friends with the non-show business Robin Williams? What is going on? When you left me here in this stockroom, I was confronted by Robin Williams, the stockman. Not to be confused with Robin Williams, star of stage and TV. I think we've established that this bloke is Robin Williams, the stockman, and not Robin Williams, star of stage and TV. Anyway, here I was, alone in this dark and cold stockroom, when this big brute of a guy comes up behind me, grabs me by the throat, and has me pinned to the wall. I bet you like that. I thought I was going to die. My whole life flashed before my eyes. That must have been pretty dull. So, I remembered my first lesson in self-defense. The one you taught me. The old knee in the groin bit? No, I offered him money. But don't worry, it was only $25, and boy, was it worth it. I won two rounds of Parcheesi, and I'm beating the pants off of in Monopoly. You still haven't answered my questions. Mr. Russell, why are you playing games? Who is he? $25? If you'll give me time, I was coming to that. Mr. Smythe, I found the link. Huh? Robin here knows what's been going on. In exchange for more information, he wants a piece of the action. What action? More money. <laughs> He'll talk if we pay him. But judging by the way he lost at Parcheesi and is losing at Monopoly, I think we can get out of it pretty cheap. You mean real cheap. Mr. Russell, I'm not paying him anything. This guy's a little weird. A lot weird, but he has information we need. Oh, don't look so down just because I'm winning. You have Park Place. Mr. Russell, I think Robin Williams is dead. Robin Williams, the comedian? I didn't know he was sick. No, this one you don't. You look back there, I'll check out here.
the office is, oh, what's the term real detectives use? The office is clean. Yeah, that's it. The office is clean. Well, actually, it could use a little dusting. Mr. Russell, let's get out of these ridiculous clothes. And just when I was getting used to this shade of putrid green. It's time we paid a visit to 111 South Union Street. What's there? Not what, but who's there? Who's there? I am glad you were finally able to drop by. This afternoon, I received an anonymous Christmas parcel. Boy, is it a mystery. No card, no letter. I think we need to hire a detective on this one. Diana. Yes, ma'am. Why do I feel as if I'm guest starring in a British television show? Where is the uh, parcel? You didn't open it, did you? Of course not, you imbecile. If I had, I would probably be in a coma just like four of my employees. I put it over there awaiting your arrival. Diana, bring me the parcel. Yes, ma'am. But if you decide to open it, I'm out of here. I mean, I don't want to alarm you, and I want to keep the situation calm. But what if there's a bomb in this box? Or a poisonous snake left out? Just perhaps it's some god-awful, gaudy gift. A picture of your ex-husband, maybe. Well, I don't think I could stomach that, ma'am. Diana! Thank you for keeping the situation calm. That will be all. Hmm. Just like the other parcels. Same wrapping paper, ribbons, and bows. I must say that low-life filthy slime bag certainly has good taste in Christmas wrapping paper. And look here. According to this flyer, all Christmas wrapping papers, ribbons, and bows are on sale today only at Zare. See? Same wrapping paper and everything. How nice. Mr. Smythe. What are you going to do? First, I need to make a phone call to Top Hat Limousine Rentals. And Mr. Russell, you and I are going to pay a visit to our local Zare store. Great! We're going to take advantage of the Christmas sale. No, not quite. Oh, too bad. That's some sale going on at Zare's. With the money you make and you shop at Zare? How do you think Madam could afford to live so well? You should see the kitchen curtains Madam bought from Kmart. Diana! I'm going. Your maid mentioned your ex-husband. I hadn't realized you'd been married. It was a messy and painful separation, and I don't wish to talk about it. Oh. Besides, I'm having enough problems without dragging my ex into this. Uh, Mr. Smythe, what are you going to do? I'll explain later. You just sit here and wait for that call, and whatever you do, don't open your door this evening for anybody. Oh, except for us. I'm going to carefully consider that one. You just had to buy the wrapping paper, didn't you? Oh, I bought you some, too. Did you at least get the computer printout? Yes, I did. And that only cost me $50. 50 What happened to the 25 like we agreed? Inflation? <laughs> but everything's here. Every store transaction that took place today. Smythe, I think I know what you're going to do with all of this, but uh, what if our suspect paid cash? And what if our suspect didn't buy the Christmas paper here? Then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, step three. Hey, where are you going? I, I need to get to the post office before it closes. I have a stack of Christmas cards that need mailing. It's here. What's here? Do you have a quarter I can borrow? I don't know. Let me check. You had $50 a couple of hours ago. Certainly you should have one quarter. Ta-da! One quarter. Who are you calling? Who are you calling? Shh, it's ringing. Who are you calling? Hello, uh, may I speak with Jonathan Peters, please? Ah, hello, Mr. Peters, good afternoon. You don't know me personally, but I have an important business deal I'm ready to arrange. Who are you talking to? Well, it's not important who I am, but who I represent. And I think you should be made aware of a certain business transaction to which Cynthia Van Martin III is ready to commit. Why is he talking like this? Who are you talking to? It doesn't matter how I got this number. What matters is the $1.1 million you want from Ms. Van Martin III. 
Yes, I thought you'd see it my way. If you call her tonight about nine o'clock to make the proper arrangements, she will be most eager to comply with your request. Let's just say I'm a business associate who has advised her to come to her senses and pay the money you want. Yes, under your terms. Nine o'clock, Cynthia will be waiting for your call. Who are you talking to? Let's get back to Cynthia's. Who are you talking to? Just exactly who did you call? Good luck. Jonathan Peters. And how come she waits? I am your partner. She's just the client. It's because you're both British, right? You, you have connections here. I'll explain everything to everyone later, but right now you must both go along with me. Here's what I want you to do. At nine o'clock, when that phone rings, you will answer it as planned. You... Hello? Yes, this is Cynthia Van Martin III. 99. Yes, my business associates advised me to give in to your demands. I can bring it in a Christmas gift box with a red and green ribbon. And a big red and green bow. Yes, yes, I can do that. To, how do you spell that name? Mm hmm From, mm hmm Yes, I know where that is. Christmas Eve at 4.30? I'll be there. No, my business associate will not be with me. And in exchange for my money, you will be giving me an antidote for my employees who are comatose? Good. Until tomorrow. Over here, Mrs. Van Martin III. I've got it all. It's in the Christmas package. Ribbons and bows and a to and from card, just as you requested. What's happening? They're talking. Now what's happening? They're still talking. Do you think the mysterious stranger will get mad when he opens the present Cynthia brought him and instead of the money he wanted, it's one of his terrible toys? Yes, I think I would be miffed. Wait, they're leaving? I think Cynthia Van Martin's being kidnapped, come on! Uh-oh, I think this is where the action begins. when they're not being sung by you. I shoot not only you, but Cynthia, too. Oh, and right at Christmas time, too. Before anyone is shot, 
I just have one important question for Cynthia Van Martin III. Could you pay us now and we'll be on our way? Why are you doing this? Uh, huh? I find it very amazing that you have such interest in a toy store. Or is it toys you're interested in, Mr. Peters? I think Mr. Peters' sexual pleasures are his own business. I am not talking about anyone's sexual pleasures. Oh. I am talking about Jonathan's relationship with Cynthia Van Martin III. What? what? Cynthia Van Martin and her estranged husband, Jonathan Van Martin. My name is Jonathan Peters, not Van Martin. Oh, really? I think not. Jonathan Van Martin... The third. ...is your name. And uh, Peters is your maiden name, is that correct, Cynthia? How did you find that out? A little extra digging. As I was talking with your toy store manager, Betty Bishop, I noticed a folder lying on the counter. The moment she turned her back, I slipped it into the Santa suit. Later, I went through all those old records and receipts, some of them dating back to 1980, and I found the signature of Cynthia Peters and your then-partner, now-husband, Jonathan Van Martin III's signature as well. Why didn't you share that file discovery with me? You were too busy shopping at Zare's. Oh, never mind. How did you piece everything together so quickly? It's only an hour show, lady. Everything fell into place. As the limousine drove away from the toy shop yesterday afternoon, I got the license plate number. I traced that number to Top Hat Limousine Rentals, and I was able to get an invoice on that particular limousine. The Zare's computer printout was easy. Of course. He sent me in after it. Lucky for us, you charged your purchase. Not only was your name on the printout, but every item you bought as well. I find it incredible luck that you were able to go to the exact same Zare store I went to. Uh, Mr. Russell happened to notice a flyer at uh, Cynthia's flat yesterday afternoon. Zare's was advertising the very same wrapping paper you were using to wrap all those so-called presents. Uh, this particular wrapping paper was Zare's special designer brand, and it can be purchased only at Zare's. I knew I shouldn't have bought designer gift wrap at Zare's. It's a dead giveaway. What cleverness did you use to get my telephone number? I looked in the phone book. Another mistake! Having a listed telephone number? Why do you and Jonathan want to ruin your toy business? Oh, I have been involved with the toy business for years. Little dolls that walk, talk, ate, spit up, went to the bathroom. You name it, they did it. Pogo sticks, unlimited games, bikes, skateboards, roller skates, ice skates, hundreds of water pistols and slinkies coming out of the gazoo. Uh, is this going someplace or are we taking inventory here? A year after buying the business, I took on a partner, Jonathan Van Martin III. Six months after becoming business partners, we became wedded partners. About a year ago, Jonathan and I faked a separation, not only in our marriage, but in our business relationship as well. As far as friends and business associates were concerned, Jonathan cracked under pressure and just disappeared. That was step one of our plan. Wouldn't it be easier just to have a going out of business sale? Step two was devised to throw people off. Everyone was caught up with the bizarreness of this case. No one seemed concerned anymore with my marital problems. But to ensure that our plan could be carried out, we had to get rid of people who might put two and two together. So we devised a plan. We rigged toys, our own toys. The toys I rigged had some sort of spring device that made them work. Ah, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, I wish I could give you a demonstration. It really is quite clever of me. Too bad we don't have a toy that I can show you. Oh, wait. Here's one. <gasps> Will this work? Yes, perfectly. You see, a. Uh, Hold that, Cynthia. <clears throat> I developed a chemical. Oh, you're a chemist too? Yes, among other things. When the chemical is inhaled, it renders the victim comatose. So I had to make sure that the chemical would be thrown in the nose or mouth area. That's why it's so important to have some sort of spring activation. Of course, the chemical isn't fatal, is it? No, oh, no way. Our intent was not to kill, merely to get all our money back. Cynthia Van Martin III is 
kidnapped when she brings all her money to this mysterious stranger. We skip the country and are never heard from again, just like her husband disappeared without a trace. And what about Betty Bishop? Where does she fit into this? She was hired because we needed someone to go into my shop and manage it. Miss Bishop was our most recent applicant and didn't know anything about me or my past. By the way, where is my money? Uh, a statement you made earlier has been gnawing at me, John. You said it wasn't your intent to kill anyone. Well, what about Robin Williams? You killed him, didn't you? And um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe our time is just about up too? Yes, well, we had hoped to avoid murder, but one night a Robin overheard Cynthia and me planning our next move. Robin wanted a cut of the action or he'd go to the police and, well, his price was too high, so he had to be eliminated. And after our terrible toy demonstration, you and you will join him. No rush. Watch when the jack-in-the-box pops out of his house how the chemical is literally thrown into the victim's face. Jonathan! Cynthia! I thought the toy was aimed at Nicholas and Nicholas. Now look what you've done. Actually, you did it. Say your prayers, gentlemen. Our lives. How did you know to pull that rope? Elementary, my dear Mr. Smythe. Elementary. The sign says, do not pull the rope. Since when do I listen to anyone? Oh, don't be so depressed, Mr. Russell. The chemical that rendered those people comatose will wear off and they'll be fine. I know. You're depressed because we didn't get paid. Not really. Well, I bloody well am. So, what's wrong, then? Nothing. Well, all right, if you don't want to tell me. Well, if you insist. I don't know, it's just that this is my first Christmas without my family. They're probably exchanging their Christmas cards now while I'm stuck here. Oh, no offense, it's not that I'm not having a Merry Christmas with you. Because I'm not. It's just that this is my first Christmas, I, I won't have a tree. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm not even in my own country for the holiday season. It's not. Anyway, I told you why we couldn't have a tree in the office. Yeah, you don't like them. Some excuse. Now, why couldn't you have gone out and bought a tree and put it in your apartment? And when did I have time? I was lucky to get my bird stuffed. You could have bought your tree in between mailing all those gifts and wrapping all those presents. Come on. Let's go inside and have some of those famous Christmas cookies you've baked, all right? Mr. Smythe, where did this come from? You remember you said you had to go to the post office and I told you I would see you later? Well, this is my first Christmas in the United States and, well, happy Christmas, partner. Partner? I am your partner, a new partner, and I'm proud of that. I know I can be a real pain in the butt. Rather. But I'm just trying to learn as much as I can. And well, my last employer, uh, what's his name, would probably tell you the same thing, I hope. And well, maybe one day we can look back at this moment and, and realize what a special relationship we had and, and always will have. On the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love sent to me three French hens. Why fight it? It's Christmas. Two turtle doves and, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love said to me, 
four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me five gold rings. Four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Merry Christmas, Nicholas. Merry Christmas, Nicholas. <laughs>